it it's 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 gambling in its finest form you can hit big hey everyone welcome to another episode of perfectly mentored i'm your host jason portnoy one of the hottest markets for investing right now isn't what you think it's not about wall street it's, but it's about nostalgia it's about artwork we're talking sports cards and trading cards like pokemon Yes, really. I'm not making this up. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars in play here. So before you dismiss it, listen up to this podcast I just did with one of the go-to guys when it comes to sports and trading cards, Sasha Tamadon. Super excited to have you here. Sasha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. I've been uh, I've been watching this on my calendar, waiting, counting down the days. Me, me too. I, th this is, this is a field that I mean, is fascinating for me. So I, like I said, this is a first for us on the show. I mean, we brought in mindset coaches, business experts, thought leaders, top investors, but now uh, we're talking sports cards, right? So I, I'm not belittling it. I, I want everyone to understand that, you know, we're talking sports cards, but this is a, a massive money game. This is a, this is a big investment game. And I see the craze and the money and the investing going on. So I believe you're the perfect person to have on the show. So I'm super excited. So if you can just talk to us a little bit about your background and how you got started and became the go-to guy on everything re related to sports and trading cards. Yeah. So um, I actually first got into it in 2019. So I'm not like, I haven't been in it for too long. But I was like in college, I was, I had a nine to five job and I was like, I need to make some more money here. Um, and I was reselling on the side and I happened to get into sports cards. Um, and at that time I, I was trying to understand from different people, like, how does this work? And I was like, so I can go buy a Luka Doncic base prison PSA 10 for like $60. And if he plays good, you know, that could turn into a hundred dollar card. And they're like, yeah, basically yes. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so I literally got into it like that. I was buying Luca based prisms, like a lot of them at one time. Um, and I honestly saw an opportunity for an early market because the same trends you're kind of seeing now, they were there in 2019. Um, and then, yeah, just one thing led to another. I was sending a bunch of cards to PSA. Um, I was buying, you know, LeBron Chrome 111 PSA tens, and I was just buying and selling, buying and selling one thing led to another. And I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, so let's break that down for a second. Yeah. Like, cause, cause for the people who don't understand, you just gave a bunch of things, Chrome, PSA, uh, you know, we have colors, we have, yep. uh, we have, we have optic hollows, like talk to us a little bit about that and break that down for us. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So the first thing is with, um, cards to currently today, um, they are graded by PSA, which is a grading company. Um, so if you get a, they have a scale from one to 10. So if your card turns out to be a 10 perfect condition, it's going to be worth a lot of money. You're going to be able to get a premium on the card. Nines are also good too. Um, but for modern, you want to stick to 10 to nine, anything below that, it's not going to be worth much. Um, so for example, I was talking about Luka Doncic, right? Um, Luka Doncic based Prism 10, which Prism is a brand um, that sells cards in 2019 was $60. Currently today, that's a $1,700 card. Um, so the, the, it, from an investment aspect, if you tell anybody, wait, I could have bought, you know, Luka Doncic a year ago, year and a half ago for $60, and now it's a $1,700 card, they would go insane. That's a crazy ROI. Um, but that's like the money that has, and, and the money that's going into sports cards right now, right? I, I mentioned LeBron's uh, 111 Topps Chrome PSA 10. That is his specific rookie card from 2003. That was a two thousand dollar card last year, year and a half ago. Now that's a it actually hit an all time high yesterday. Um, I believe it hit twenty one thousand wow. dollars. Um, an insane ROI. I mean, it's funny when I um when I'm either you know selling to um, wealthy businessmen and I'm telling them about um you know the returns, and they can't believe it, right? Two thousand to twenty to twenty one thousand in, in a year is absolutely insane. But there, there is a lot of dynamics that come into play with all of that, right? You have to be buying the right brand of the rookie card. You have to be buying, you know, a PSA 10 or PSA 9. You don't want to overpay. I see a lot of people when they come into the game, um, they, don't, they, they don't even look at the number for PSA, right? So they might be buying a PSA 8 and they think they got a good deal on the card, but they don't know it was a PSA 8. They thought it was a PSA 10. So there are variables that come into play and education that comes into play to be able to be successful. But I think once you learn those basic things, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. So, so just so, to open this up so people understand, what's the most expensive sports card on the market right now? 
Uh, so there's a there's a couple golden auctions going right now. Um, I don't know the exact most expensive. I just know the ones that are currently on the market. There's a Luca Gold PSA 10, which is numbered to 10. Um, that I believe still has 20 days left, and it's already at 200,000. Wow. Um, so I, I'm, I know we saw some all time highs just recently. A Giannis logo man went for one over one million dollars. So there's you know crazy cards in that one two million dollar range, um, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, and it's crazy when you meet these people that actually have these cards. They were just collecting. You know, maybe they bought it for 10, 20,000. I believe the Giannis, it was a 16 year old kid who bought that card. And I think he bought it for like 30,000 around there. Um, so he turned 30,000 into 1 million, right? So a lot of these guys that also that had these cards, they weren't expecting this to happen, right? So right now, this is actually a point of, of sell off for them, right? Uh, in taking their profit and moving on to the next thing. Whereas now we're seeing um, these big, big investors with a lot of money, um, fractional ownership companies coming in. And they're actually the ones buying up these cards um, currently right now. And so for the people who are listening who are like, hey, I have old cards, you know, when I was a kid, uh, they're probably somewhere in, in a shoebox somewhere. I, I want to look at them. How do they A, learn what their cards are worth and B, uh, yeah. get, get it graded? Yeah, well, number one, eBay is the currency. Um, so eBay completed and sold listings. That's going to be what you want to look at to know if your cards are worth something. Um, I get that DM a lot of times. Hey, I found a bunch of my old cards in my basement. Sometimes you'll find something that's really, really expensive. But what I've found is like 70% of the time, um, they'll just be 80s to 90s baseball cards that were massively overproduced and yeah. probably aren't going to be worth much. And, and then to get it graded? To get it graded, you want to send it to... Well, first off, if you just want to get it graded, you actually can't send it to PSA yourself. You have to go through a group submitter to be able to do that. Um, PSA is so backed up that they're just not going to be taking in people. Um, so you can find those group submitters on Instagram. I have a private sub. There's Mark's cards on Instagram that, that does um, it as well. Um, basically, what you do is you'll send in their card to them, and they'll be serv different service levels. So it would be like a 10-day service level, a 5-day, a 2-day, a 20-day. Um, the issue that's actually current, occurring currently in the market, though, with PSA is PSA is taking so many cards that they can't provide actu that those actual 10-day service levels. A 10-day will actually be a month and a half in reality. A 20-day will be four-plus months in reality. Uh, so that's one thing in the market today that like, um, you know, people like me and others have to adapt to um, because, look, you're not going to be able to get your cards back in um, you know, a fast period of time, maybe like how you would a year ago. And is that, is that like one of the most common mistakes? Like people just try to get everything graded versus let's see if this is actually worth something. Cause it probably costs money to get it graded yeah. and the whole time period back. So do people like, I don't want people to now be like, okay, I'm going to send my entire shoebox to you of my cards, go get them all graded. Right. Yeah. So like, um, first you want to make sure what your raw card, what does that sell for? Right. So if I have a raw card and I get it and I look on eBay and I'm like, okay, this is like a 30, $40 card. And then I can type in, what does a PSA 10 go for? Okay. Now I know a PSA 10 go PSA 10 goes for $200. So now I'm thinking, okay, like what service level would best fit this to send this card in? Would I put it on a, you know, a five day service level? That's $85. Probably not because if I get a nine, then my margins are gone. Right. So like, I, you know, you'd have to break that all down. You know, if it was a $20, $30 raw card, I'd probably send that in a 20 day service, which is $30, right? Um, so I'm in it for about, you know, 55, anywhere 55 to 60 bucks. Um, and then if I get a PSA 10, look, I'm making, you know, I'm over doubling my money. Um, at the same time, you really want to look at the condition of the card before sending anything in. Um, you want to make sure the centering of the card is good. The corners of the card aren't, you know, damaged. You know, you see those little white corners. You don't want that. Um, also, the surface is a big issue too, um, with scratches. So if, but if you ch if if it checks all those you know things, then it's like okay, cool. Like I have a good shot of PSA ten. So I do see a lot of people they won't just they won't check their cards. They'll just look at it and they'll be like, this looks like a PSA ten. I know it's going to get a ten, and they'll send in thirty and forty of those, and, and then they'll you know PSA will give them back, and they're getting seven eights and nines, and they're wondering what what happened, right? Um, so there is you know there is a lot of education that goes into it. 100%. What about, um, you know, you could have a really old card, let's say, um, you know, that that's worth a lot. I mean, and, and, or, or baseball card that that's really, really old, but it's a little bit damaged. Does that, does like, yeah. how, how do you weigh what's more important? 
the you know, the rarity it, of the card or or the or the or the condition of the card i should say well, this is a great topic because um if the card is super rare a psa 2 3 4 could be still worth thousands and thousands of dollars uh michael jordan's flair rookie psa 10 right now a psa 2 is like 2 to 3 grand i believe right now so there's still money there even if a psa 2 if you think about a psa 2 that's a very very poor condition card um, but I think also what's happening is with those PSA 10s, they're hitting 200,000, 220,000. But the everyday collector, the everyday person's like, hey, I can't spend $200,000 on this card, but I can go get a low condition one and pay 2,000. I can still have the card and enjoy the card. So there, is, so if it is rare, if it is really rare, those uh, you know PSA 1s, PSA 2s are still going to be worth good money. It, for the people who are just getting started or they're interested now in investing, you convince them that the ROI is, is there yeah. better than the stock market. And they hear this and they want to get started. Can you, uh, I guess, perfectly mentor us uh, on, on what to look for on and how to get started and where to get started? Yeah, I think the 100%, I think the key is to figure out what you're coming into the sports card game for. I see this mistake a lot. Um, you know, so a person wants to come in as an investor but they're not willing to, or, or a reseller, right? But they're not willing to give up the card. They get attached to the card, right? Um, that's the that's the one good thing about the card market and one bad thing. You physically can hold the card. So you see a lot of attachment issues, but if you're purely coming in it to make money, you have to be able to flip and turn and take in your ROI and move into the next thing. Um, so I think people really have to understand what they're coming into it for. Now, if you're coming into it as a collector, well, great, right? Maybe maybe you have a little bit of investing aspect, but you're able to hold on to the cards, enjoy the cards, you know, watch your favorite uh, player play while holding the card and enjoying it. So the number one thing I believe is make sure you know what you're coming into this game for. That's the biggest thing. I see them. I see it like every day. I'll have friends, right? That will be like, hey, Sash, like I want to get into this. Like, what do I do? And and I'll like hit them up and I'll be like, okay, what are you getting into for blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, oh, I actually bought a bunch of, uh, you know, boxes of prism basketball and I ripped them all. And I was like, well, that's gambling, right? So if you're coming into it from just to have fun then go rip some boxes, have a good time. Just know that the ROI is most likely not going to be there. Really? Even by buying those boxes? It, it's, it's, it's gambling in its finest form. You can hit big, right? You can buy a box for, a thousand dollars and hit a ten thousand dollar card but most of the time you know you're going to get a thousand dollar box you're going to get 200 300 out of it unless you find a really good card and you can send it to psa and then you're waiting the long game and trying to break even right um that's the biggest that's one of the biggest um i wouldn't say issues but but um problems that people when they get into the card game they just go buy boxes and start ripping them the roi isn't there the roi i tell everybody is uh, buying singles, whether that's graded or getting educated on grading these cards and sending them into PSA. Now, again, it's fun to rip. I know I've seen it. There, in, there's a reason why live breaks on Instagram um, are going crazy. Um, you you see guys like Rob Kardashian and, and, and other people live breaking because it's fun. It, it's fun. It's gambling at its finest. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like playing at the roulette table or the craps table and rolling the dice. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, if I'm if I'm talking to somebody that's coming in as an investor or a reseller or a flipper, um, I would I would say, hey, look, maybe you can rip, you know, once you get more established with your singles and stuff like that. So what's your decision process before you buy a card? Like how do you know what you should pay and what it's worth and when and most importantly, when to sell? Yeah. Uh well, the number one thing is I use eBay like everybody else. I use eBay sold and completed items to know what a card you know, sells for. And again, I also have, you know, friends who've paid for similar cards and I can get a understanding from them what a card's worth. Um, but for, and what I look for currently, um, I've actually shifted um, what I've been doing for the last several months. Cause over the past year, really truly what I've been doing is I've been buying these young players, either whether getting them graded or already buying PSA tens and flipping them during the season and keep moving my money and working my money that way. Um, I, I still had, you know, a lot of Hall of Fame players. I still had legends, but it was heavy on the young stars. Currently, what I'm shifting to is going to these more rare and expensive cards because I'm seeing what's happening with um, the fractional, these fractional ownership companies buying these really rare and expensive cards. 
um, I, I've used this analogy before. It's almost like uh, buying, uh, buying, investing in a private company um, before it goes public, right? It, it's very similar to that. Um, so currently right now, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm buying. I'm buying Jordan Fleer, PSA 9s. I'm buying Kobe Bryant, Topps Chrome Refractors, which is, you know, one of those top of the line rookie cards. Um, I'm buying LeBron's rookie cards, LeBron Topps 111 PSA 10 rookie cards at scale. I'm kind of mute, moving a lot of my money that I've made from um, these flips and, and young prospects and stars and putting them into that because I think those are going to be the cards that over the next five and 10 years are going to be seeing even more growth and more ROI. Um, and then when to sell, man, for young stars, I, I like, for example, I love Luka Doncic and Trey Young. Um, so I can hold that a little bit longer than I could Zion. Um, it's funny, like I, I bought, I've, I'll buy Zion cards in, in the morning, like 9, 10 a.m. And then I'll flip them by 2 p.m. Um, so I, that, that's kind of the notion I'm also trying to get people to understand for, for young players. At the end of the day, this market is hot. But there will be a point where the market isn't hot. And do you want to be holding, you know, 100 Zion Williamson base prism PSA 10s that are, you know, they're, they're easy to find? Probably not, right? Would you rather be holding a LeBron rookie card? 100%. I mean, it's crazy. When, like, what brought back this resurgence in sports cards? I mean, go back 10 years ago. Uh, I remember I, I bought, like, some sort of magazine to look at what my cards were worth. And it was like, all right, it's nothing. I'll just hang on to them. They were just cards from my youth. And then all of a sudden, this exploded. Yeah. Uh, what brought this all back? Well, and, and Pokemon cards, too. That's also been huge as well. We'll, we'll, um, we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, there's, I think there's a couple things. Um, the, the number one thing, I don't know if there's a number one, but there's a couple dynamics that come into play. The pandemic had a, a big, a big uh, plus because everybody was stuck at home, right? They couldn't do anything. Um, and they're hearing about the sports card thing going on and they bought a couple boxes, started ripping and people got hooked. But I would make the debate that if the pandemic didn't happen, this was still occurring. It, the pandemic just kind of jump-started everything. Um, you know, there's, you know, for, uh, Gary V talks about this a lot. You know, the people in their 40s and 50s, you know, they have eight, nine, 10-year-old sons and daughters and they, you know, start, they, they wanted to get them into it. And now they're both hooked. Right. And then there's the investing aspect of, Hey, look, like I can buy a LeBron rookie card or a Jordan rookie card and it will appreciate over time. Now that's happening at a way bigger scale, but that's, you know, I think that's kind of what got people started and hooked. And then again, there's the gambling aspect of, Hey, look, I can um, buy a thousand dollar box and potentially you know, buy, get a card that's worth 10, 20, 30, $40,000. Um, and then I think art is the biggest thing too. I really think these cards are turning into art pieces and art forms. Um, especially when you look at some of the rarity of these Michael Jordan cards, Kobe Bryant cards, um, you know, LeBron rookie cards, um, Kareem rookie cards. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of rarity that comes into play. And I think when rarity comes into play with something physical, um, I think good things really happen. I mean, why is an art piece worth, you know, $50 million, right? Like why? Um, so if you look at some of these Michael Jordan rookie cards, well, Michael Jordan's way more popular than, you know, an art piece that nobody knows about. Yeah. Um, and it, when you tell them there's only, you know, I think there's only 360 around there, Fleer rookie PSA 10s, which is his pristine rookie card. Um, and 150 of them aren't going to be sold because people are just not going to sell them. And fractional ownership companies are buying up the rest. You know, that that two hundred thousand dollar card in ten years probably gonna turn into a million dollar card. And it's crazy because I remember I used to go to the card store to buy cards. Now then I grew up and there were no more card stores. They went under and now you have guys like Dan Fleischman opening up card stores. Yep. Everyone's opening up these card stores. Um is you know, when even when I was a kid and buying, we had like Opeachy, Tops, Fleer, Upper Deck. I mean, that was kind of and that was kind of it. Now you're starting to name like there's prism, there's there's certain types, there's optic hollows, there's yep. you know, all these different versions. How do we even know what to look out for, and, and what brands are like? Are there a yeah. particular brand and style that do better than others? Yeah. So for for basketball, prism's king. Um, that's like where the, there's the most liquidity and most money going into. Um, now Panini owns prism. That's 
that's their company. And they also own Optic and Select as well. So those are also their other companies that they own. Um, I would say like, if you're going from a scale for basketball, Prism is going to be number one. Um, you can make the debate that Optic and Select are right there at number two. And then Mosaic is actually a new product that came out that is really getting the attention of, you know, new collectors and investors and flippers and that are coming in. That's been doing very, very well. Um, so in basketball, those are kind of the, I'd say four top dogs um, in the world of, of basketball cards right now, currently. And then there's subsets inside those. No. Yeah, exactly. There's subsets. Um, you know, select actually has, you know, court side field level. There's, there's different variations of these cards. There's also a uh, numbered color, right. And, uh, and the beauty of, of, of numbered cards, right. Is that it just, it shows you the rarity right there, right. You'll, you can pull a, um, you know, you could pull a, Trey Young Red Prism, which is numbered to 299. So you'd be like, okay, there's only 299 cards of these. It shows me right on the back of the card. Um, and what that does is that tells everybody, hey, look, there's only 299 of these. This is a rare card. So you'll get a premium on that card. So if I was uh, going to buy a Trey Young, right? If you're, if, yeah. if I was going to buy these young guys, am I looking for Prism Select? Am I looking for for the number of colors? Like, like how, how do I even know what? Because because you could have multiple different rookie cards within the same brand. How do you know which ones? Yeah. I, I would say this, if somebody's just looking into first get started off, I would say go with your prism based rookie card <clears throat> because that's the most liquid and that's the most easy obtainable to get. It's almost like buying a stock in, you know, a modern market stock. Um, so uh, I would just look up if you want that card, Trey Young base prism. And I believe his number set for that card is 78. So I'll just look up 78 PSA 10. I believe that card's probably around uh, 650 to $700. <laughs> Crazy. Um, <clears throat> before the season, actually, that was a $300 card. Um, and also uh, the off season last year, that was a $30 card, just Crazy. to keep it in perspective. Um, but now it's a $600 card. And look, if Trey Young can get that team into the playoffs, right? Um, and they can have a decent run, you know, that could be a thousand dollar card real quick. At the same time, if Trey Young gets hurt or doesn't, you know, puts 10 bad games together, that could go down to, you know, a $400 card. So it's, again, if you know sports, this is a good opportunity um, for sure. Because like, if you know that, Hey, look, Jason Tatum's out, Jalen Brown is going to be able to play a couple good games in a row. Then there's opportunity there, right? If you know those little things at sports, you know it's it's almost better than fantasy sports, right? So you're almost like a day trader in sports cards. Yep, like it's 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 day trading, and then for me personally, like I'm day trading and then using my profits and putting them into true investment pieces. Um, that's basically what I'm doing um, because again, I think that there's actually um, although these you know Jordan and Kobe and LeBron rookie cards have gone up a ton, I actually think that there's it's just the beginning for those cards. So I'm making sure that at the same time, I can make enough money where I'm flipping these cards and putting it into these types of, you know, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan cards, because I think that those are going to be the things that really show great ROI over the next five years. Is there a sport uh, that does better than most? Like is basketball better than hockey, Basketball's, better than baseball? Bas yeah. Basketball is insane, man. It's insane. It's the most liquid. You have the Chinese market that just loves basketball and there's a lot of money in the Chinese market. Um, I would say that soccer has seen a great amount of growth over the past year. Um, to over, keep it over football and baseball. Over, oh, for the growth it's seen, yes. Um, I would still say that football is number two in the field, but I would I would say that, and baseball is number three. But I would say, um, you know, soccer is actually gaining a lot of attention. Uh, just to keep it in perspective, you know, Kylian Mbappe is a big soccer star. Um, his prism world cup card which is from 2018 um was like 40 dollars um a little over a year ago it actually shot up uh during the premier league to three thousand dollars now that was insane there was a lot of you know things that came into play with that because people were so hot on him but still now it came back down and now it's a 900 hundred dollar card but if we just look at it forty dollars to $900 in about a year, year and a half. That's an insane ROI. Um, it's, and again, like it's crazy because, you know, I'll be selling, like I talked about before to, you know, these wealthy businessmen, people that, 
you know, have a couple of businesses and I'll be telling them these things. And I'll, and they'll be like $40 to $900. I was like, how many of them did you buy? And I was like, I bought like a lot of them, like at one time, you know what I mean? And they'll be like, okay, I want to get into this. Right. Um, so it's just insane to see the growth of this industry, but at the same time, there's still a lot of opportunity. I don't want to make it sound like, oh, there's the opportunity's gone. I would say that, no, this is really truly just the beginning. Um, as long as you're educated about, about cards and the process, this is not something where you can just go with, like, it's a stock. You can go and just know what you're getting this there. There's a little bit more, um, education that comes into play to make sure you're buying the right thing and buying something that will be in demand. If you're going to do it that way, right? If you're if you're going to do the day trading way, if not, you could do it the buy the, like the Jordans and and the creams and all that, and that's just no matter what you'll you'll weather any storm, the down in the market, the up in the market, and 20 years from now it will still be worth a lot. Yep, exactly. I I still I'm so the Jordan Flare PSA 10 is just a card that I'm like that's going to be a million dollar card in like 10 years. How many do you own? I don't, I own one PSA nine that I just got. It's funny. I paid thirty thousand dollars for the card, and <laughs> and uh, I got a forty five thousand dollar offer yesterday for the card, and I bought it like a week, week and a half ago, and I was like, well, I wasn't planning on selling this thing like until you know a year, two years later, but that's how fast this market is moving. A Jordan Fleer Nine, I when I paid thirty thousand dollars for it, people told me I overpaid because I did. But I saw that I couldn't get anything for under 30000 And I paid this person direct, right? It wasn't on eBay where they had fees or whatever. The last comp on eBay for the card was 30000 But in reality, that's like a 28K card. But I paid $30,000 direct. People said, look, you overpaid. Like, you could have got it cheaper. And I was like, in my head, I was like, no, because I looked everywhere. Um, and now that's, you know, I get an offer for 45 k already. It just shows how fast the market is moving. So... Let's talk about eBay for a second, because yeah. there are going to be people who run and buy, and then there are people who will be like, well, how do I know if what I'm getting is real on eBay like, and, and not get scammed by like someone who sends me like a fake rookie card or, or easy to swap something out and, and you know, with a PSA logo on it? Is there certain things you look for? Yeah, well, the number one thing is the barcode. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's actually a number um, on, the, on the slab where you can actually look up on PSA and it'll show you the exact card that it should be. Um, <clears throat> so that's the biggest thing that you could look for. Um, and then again, I think uh, that there are some variables of things that are coming out right now currently that, um, you know, for example, BGS is another grading company. There's a, there's something that's coming out that's showing that some BGS tens are actually fake. So there's a lot of, <clears throat> variables that are coming into play right now that people are starting to figure out what looks like a BGS, what is a fake BGS 10 or BGS 9.5 or PSA 10. Um, but people are still learning, you know? So there are, there are some variables that come into play that. Like the last thing you want to do is spend $28,000 yeah. on a Jordan rookie <clears throat> and then get it and be like, Oh well, no. Yeah, exactly. And, and for mine personally, like I showed like three or four Jordan guys, Hey, is this, is this a, a clean card, a good card? Like, and they're like, okay, yeah, it's legit. Um, so I would say before, before buying that card or whatever, um, again, if you're buying it from like an auction house, golden auctions, PWCC, um, posting, you're most likely in the green. Um, but if you're buying it from like a private seller, I would say like, Hey, you'd have to, you'd have to talk to a couple Jordan guys or even DM me. And I'll try to help you out and put you in the right direction. Because again, yes, there are, there is, again, it's not like a stock where it's like, Hey, you can just buy it and it's legit. Yeah. There are some variables that come into play. You know, a lot of the times, <clears throat> if you'll see a fake PSA slab, it will just look off in terms of the print and the writing. Um, but yeah, I would say you'd have to, if you're buying a car that's over, you know, 10,000, definitely get it checked out with, with, with some people that know what they're doing. And is eBay still the best place to buy singles? 100%. E e eBay is the best place to buy singles, 100%. If you're really trying to get into this as a um, full-time job, you'll, you'll start moving towards, uh, you know, private deals, right? Instagram, stuff like that. But for the most easy to obtain, eBay. So now let's talk topics and off sports because you mentioned Pokemon and I know I've, I've heard that's blowing up. <clears throat> what, what, what is it about Pokemon that's blowing up and what other... I guess topics or culture is doing well. 
it, it Pokemon is crazy. Uh, ha- had a more of national wide like news than sports cards. Actually, it was actually weird to think about. Um, I think a lot of people um, who are in their thirties around there grew up with Pokemon, right? That was their thing. And they love Pokemon cards. And the, the crazy thing right now, and with Pokemon cards, it wasn't overproduced for the first edition card. So I, if you're looking on the news and you're seeing all these headlines of all, you know, oh, this Pokemon card sold for 300K, they're talking about first edition cards and they all have a stamp on the middle left of the card that literally has a number one. Um, and that, that's how you'll be able to tell it's a first edition card. Um, so yeah, man, a lot of, it's just nostalgia at its finest form for Pokemon specifically. People are looking at these cards that they used to own when they're, you know, five, 10, 15. And they're like, Hey, like, wait, I want that card. And now they have a little bit of money and now they're like, okay, I'm going to go spend whatever it's worth to get that card. Uh, for specifically for Charizard, excuse me, I got to get some water in me. Specifically for Charizard, there's, uh, there's for the PSA 10, I believe there's about a little over a hundred, somewhere around there. That card was $80,000 over the summer in July, June, July. That's a $300,000 card right now. <laughs> Crazy. The market has grown insanely. There's actually one guy, his name's Gary. Yeah, he he's actually on Pawn Stars. I don't know if you've seen that video. He's He owned a crazy amount of Charizard PSA 10s. Um, he had a black label B just PSA 10s, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's just an extremely hard grade to get. So it makes it really, really expensive. Um, he owned a crazy amount of cards and now he's hanging out with, and he was, I think he was going to sell like the whole stash for like 600 K, something like that. Um, and they didn't do it. Um, and now he's hanging out with like Steve Aoki and, um, you know, Dan Fleischman and all these guys. And he sold a card to actually Logan Paul for like 150 K somewhere around there, a Charizard PSA 10. His stash is worth, tens of million dollars now right um so that's the growth we've seen with pokemon cards again i just think it's nostalgia at its finest form and i think that again all these high-end pieces first edition cards are turning into art pieces more than anything else um it's any high-end stuff whether it's pokemon whether it's jordan rookies whether it's lebron rookies is turning into art pieces um and i think the beauty of these fractional ownership companies coming in is that they're spending there's a lot of money behind them Um, and they're taking a lot of these cards off the market. So, you know, in two, three years, we're not going to be seeing these cards on the market anymore. Maybe it will be split up like a stock. I'm hearing also hedge funds are coming in. There's going to be, you know, uh, like hundreds of million dollar hedge funds that are just cards. Um, So there's a lot of dynamics coming into play. I would say with all these high-end stuff that we're seeing these all-time prices, it's, it's these cards turning into art pieces and art forms. Crazy. I, I, I heard Gary V talk about uh, garbage pail kids. Yeah. And I remember I used to have a whole ton of them. I, I think, I think my mother threw them out like years and years and years ago. Yeah. I, I, I hear mean, that. I hear that's coming back too. Yep. Well, they, it is. And if, I've heard horror stories with Pokemon cards specifically too, of their moms throwing away their first edition cards. They were like, I swore I had like three Charizards in there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, Dude, that's a bummer, man. Right? Or and I heard one thing. That, well, who would have like, thought? It's a garbage pail kid. Who would ever thought that would have been worth something? And, but that's exactly. you, you know what you were creating. We're creating a culture of hoarders now, of people yep. who will never throw anything out. Like like you see in my background, these are all my my childhood action figures, like from from the eighties. Yeah. And the first Game Boy and the first I we're turning into this now. I don't want to throw anything out because you never know in 40, 50 years what it, what it could be worth. Well, and that's the, that's the one, uh, I get this question a lot and they're like, are we in, Sasha, are you, are we in the junk wax era? And I'm like, yeah, we are. Because, you know, a Tyler Hero rookie card right now, Prism 10 sells for $300. You know, there's, they're easy to find. What's going to happen in 10 years when the market gets soft, right? And Tyler Hero most likely won't become a top 10 player all time, unless you're a huge Tyler Hero fan, then I'm extremely sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, that $300 card will turn into a, you know, 30, 40, 50, $60 card. Right. So there, there, you know, there are, you can play the modern market game, which I play every day, but at the same time, you don't want to be holding the bag on some of these cards as well. So that's the one thing you want to be aware of um, with these high end cards that are turning into art pieces. 
if you have the money. Um, good big opportunity, really yeah. big opportunity. I mean, that's if you're gonna buy like like the smaller guys. But if you're buying like Kevin Durant the rookie card and and Steph Great Curry buy. rookie cards, Great buy. I mean, th- these guys aren't gonna disappear from from exactly. from basketball for a long, long time. Exactly. I think, th- and I also think specifically KD is a great opportunity right now because if he How much does, is his rookie card right now? His Topps Chrome PSA 10, which is his main rookie card, is about six to $7,000 right now. <laughs> now that was, I was buying those actually, it was really funny. I was buying those April, May for $1,100 um, because nobody was willing to sit on it till now. The, one of the things you'll see, especially with dealers and stuff, they don't want to... They'll know a card's going to go up, but they never want to sit on it. I'm like, bro, I know this card's going to be it. I know I'm at least going to get 3K for this card by the time season starts. Um, but you just have to be willing to sit on the money. That's the thing. You'll, you know, there, there'll be players that get hurt and then everybody will sell off, right? They'll be like, I don't want to deal with this card anymore. And then for me, like, and for people, they should be like, hey, look, this is an opportunity to buy, yeah. right? Because by the time he comes back, boom, it's the card's going to be up 20, 30%. Right. So I, there's a lot of opportunity there as well. Uh, but yeah, I think KD in general, I think it's actually a really good buy because if he does pull off a chip in, in Brooklyn, that's going to be big for not only his that year, but also his career. So, okay. So uh, resources, what are your top three to five resources for people who want to learn more and get started aside from, and we'll get into it following you on IG and we'll let you yeah, plug yeah. yourself. I promise. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would say, Damn. Um, well, one of the interesting things is uh, there's there, there has been a lack of content for sports cards. So it, it there, there, there's these companies coming out to learn more. Um, I would say slab stocks, if you're just looking for a um, quick like graph of like, oh, this card's trending this way, that way. They have good uh, a good resource and, and good graphs that show you like the modern market really well. Um, you can follow them on Instagram. Um I believe Aaron is the owner of that. He's a super cool guy. Um, and he, you know, he gives it to you straight. What card's going up? What's card's going down? What's the potential? Um, I would say for YouTube, again, aside from myself, um, there's uh, there's a couple, you know, I, I would say Gary Vee, honestly, is a great resource. I know he doesn't talk about it on a daily basis, but at the same time, he breaks it down for somebody that's just trying to get into it very purely. And from a standpoint of, like I don't have 500, I'm not pushing a certain card. I'm just telling you the market because we are seeing, you know, some interesting things with, with content creators of like, Hey, look, they might have, you know, a hundred of that rookie card. Right. And they're like, Hey, buy this rookie card. This is a good card to have. So there is that dynamic coming into play as well, but I would say, but are they doing that? Are they doing that? And I'm not saying Gary, but like you could have influencers that have millions of followers that do it to to drive up the price of the card and then they uh, then they offload yeah there, there there is you know it's yeah there is that as well right so i would say like be careful f- from who you're listening and what their objective is right um you know for me specifically my content i've switched it up to this is what i'm do doing the day right Th- this like there'll be a camera and this is what i'm buying and selling right it's not hey go buy this card because at the end of the day, like I want, I would just rather be like, this is what I'm actually buying and selling. This is how I'm doing it. Yeah. Right. So that's the difference. But I would say slab stocks is a great resource because it's, um, it's interesting because what Aaron has done is he said that, Hey, look, I'm not going to be buying and selling cards anymore. I'm only going to have the cards for my collection. Um, so it's purely objective. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for doing this. For, for the people who obviously want to learn more about you, reach out to you. Uh, and please don't flood his DMs with what's my card worth, but actually <laughs> with, with real questions, how can they find you? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram um, at Sasha Tamadon. And I also have a YouTube channel, um, Sasha T, um, where I basically bring a camera with me and and uh, we go, you know, it's just a, basically a day in the life of what I'm buying and selling and trading. Um, so I think that's a, it gives you a cool perspective. Um, and it's not, again, like, this is what you should buy. It's just like, this is how I'm doing it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sasha. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you having me on.